So everything is on my desk right now. This is a nightmare of a mess. Okay, maybe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Plug things here, then there. Like to understand that there's that. Whatever. What you might find useful. The little nifty blockers I found. That's very simple and it works. It works tremendously good. F***ing sick. It is the beginning of winter right now. Is it the best solution? I don't know. Is it the most optimized way of doing it? For sure it's not. So we can talk about so many things. Like this was so frustrating. Like again, I'm trying to gaslight myself into thinking like, yeah, yeah, you're okay. It was just like a stupid idea. Hello everyone, to remind you what we are working on, I would like to create a pen plotter. We have obviously loads of options to buy one online, but since I have a 3D printer and an eager to learn some new things, specifically in mechanical engineering and electrical engineering, we are doing it from scratch. And my goal is to make one video every week to give you some updates. So if you find this interesting and don't want to miss any of them, I highly suggest you to subscribe. And so, what is new this week? We are going to go in order, starting with the mechanical engineering part. We tested out our mechanism, this scara mechanism, while giving some angles to my motors, see if that moves accordingly. And apparently, it is working. Well, it is working. Just the positioning of the end effector. It seems that we are on the right track with that. So yeah, we seem to have somewhat of a prototype that is okay when it comes to like just moving the end effector according to a particular angle of the motors. This is obviously far from being finished, but at least like we have something to test out both our math and our communication between the robot itself and whatever script we pass to it. Next, as I said in the previous episode, I am still waiting for a bunch of materials to be able to do more mechanical stuff. Because for the moment, like since I am starting from absolutely nothing, I just have one size of M3 screws. And as you can imagine, this is not the most comfortable way of going about things. Next, on the electrical aspect of things, we made some progress. So everything is on my desk right now. This is a nightmare of a mess, but I'm thinking I'm starting to get a hang of like how this is all going to come together. Maybe this is a little bit too optimistic from my side to say that, but I think that like we have, well, I have enough knowledge right now of how this is going to come together to maybe start to do a PCB design. Who knows? Again, this is a project where I need to make mistakes, right? This is how I'm gonna make progress. Drink your water. Uh, I'm, I'm actually gonna try to show you the breadboard right now. Oh, okay, maybe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Transformer almost fell down, Jesus Christ. So this is not like homemade CPU level, obviously, but it is a start in the fact that I just understand at least every single cable is the goal, right? I don't want to go on the simple like tutorial and just like plug things here, then there, like to understand that there's that, whatever. No, I would like it to be so that every single cable that I plug in, I understand where it comes from, how it goes, why it works this way, etc., etc., etc. You get that just by now. I am pretty sure. So electrically, that is it. I think the biggest progress I made this week might also be like the most boring, unfortunately. It is software wise. So instead of showing you like a bunch of code or whatever, I'm going to try to section what I learned, what you might find useful, and also like the little nifty blockers I found. The first one, something that I am very happy about, is to actually control two stepper motors at once. I'm going to try to make a little bit of a drawing right now. All right. So as you may know, Arduino code is separated into two phases. This is the setup that runs once every time like you load up the board. And this is the loop. That loop will obviously run every single time in that order of code. So meaning that let's say I have a loop inside a loop, let's say like this is a Y loop. This is going to run this way. I'm going to arrive here, boom, a little blocker, run again and again and again until going until the end and do that again and again and again. And for example, for one motor, let's say I would like to move my motor 200 steps to the right. So the way I'm going to do this is that in the Y loop, I will create another Y loop that will say like, hey, send one signal to the driver and that will make the motor move one step. Right? And I would, since I would like to have 200 of these, I will just do this loop 200 times, right? That's very simple and it works. It works tremendously good. The problem is, what if I want to have two motors? Turns out you have a lot of ways to do this. Like the easiest way would be sequentially, right? I have like my exactly the same, like my two four loops right there with another stepper driver that goes to the motor. The problem, well, I, mean, I can actually do, I can actually do this, right? Yeah. The problem with this is that this is going to be sequential, meaning that like, I'm going to have to wait for this one to be done with this stepping to be able to go to the next one. And it took me a long time to understand this because like, 
exactly just like I said before, I just tried to like plug and play elements that I found online to be able to make it all work. And uh, it, it was just like a stupid idea. I didn't take the time to actually read about the different methods that you have. The way it works is that, let's say, would like my first motor to move 200 steps and the next one to move 50 steps at that time. The way I do it is I send just one step to a motor, keeping track how many steps I sent to it and do the same for the next one. I say int because I keep that in an int. Well, you know, like, it's just imagery, right? And so you do that every loop so that they move at the same time. And after each stepping, you just verify if that int is actually bigger than the max number of steps you would like to take. And if that's the case, well, you just ignore that entire code block onto the next loop. And you just do that for every motors. So I think that makes sense, but we still didn't talk about acceleration, the number of steps per minute, um, the fact that all of this is not instantaneous, that you have to wait for that to be stopped for you to be able to like go to the next line, etc, etc, etc. So yeah, I know, like, I, th I think there are so many things that I need to learn about this, but like, just in a week, being also fucking sick, it is the beginning of winter right now, and it is, it is happening. Um, I learned already a lot, a lot of things. I, I was very frustrated about how all of that worked, but like, I'm slowly getting there. Again, my goal is just to have some progress every week. So yeah, uh, oh, I guess like we can section the software part into two things. So this would be for the firmware, what lives on the actual board itself on my little ESP32. So yeah, that I need to keep on grinding on how that works. In the meantime, I still can focus on so many other things. Part of these so many other things, I thought about it for a sec and uh, the ESP32 is not that big in terms of memory. So let's say this robot that I have, I have a drawing in mind or like an SVG or whatever. I generate a bunch of points I would like my robot to go to and start to draw on it, right? And this is how I would do my thing. I have like a, a series of points on which I need to go to and like my pen would be on that path. Like I, you, you understood that from, from, the, from the beginning for sure. But where do those like this gigantic array of points, where does that live? I guess a very tiny drawing can live on the ESP32, but that wouldn't be the way to go, right? So I thought about it and asked a couple of questions around of like, what is the most classic way of going about this? And the way it works is that this robot would be connected to, let's say like a laptop or whatever. And like this would be the boom, I would represent it for the ESP and it would go to the robot. Oh my God, those icons, eh? I'm, sh I'm sure this is, pretty, this is pretty understandable. So essentially like the lines of points that live on my computer and spoilers, I think those are going to be G code. It's the same thing that like you can send to a 3D printer, for example. I think the way it's going to work is that every line is going to be sent one by one to the ESP. And I think, I think the entire history or like cycle of the algorithm would be you send a line to the ESP32, the ESP processes this line and translates it to motor angles that we talked about last week mathematically, right? The ESP waits for the robot to go to that particular G code position. Once that is done, it sends back an information to the PC saying like, hey, I am done. I am ready for the next line. And this is how it's going to go. Is it the best solution? I don't know. Is it the most optimized way of doing it? For sure it's not. But I am almost certain this is how it's going to go. So now, we can think about what about this connection then? How is this going to work? Like what languages? When do you send that to the ESP? How do you send it? How do you get back the data? Do you read from something? Do you this, that, whatever? So many things that can happen right now. From the examples I found online, I decided for, so I need, I still need to find a name for it. Like I'm going to call it not the firmware. Like what, like whether the, let's say like the, I don't know, the API of the robot, let's call it this way. I decided to go with Python because like, I think it is the easiest language to put in place. Also the most understandable. And maybe this is how I'm going to have like less issues communicating with the robot. And so right now my code base is actually composed of two code bases. One being the framework, the framework, oh my God, the firmware. And the other one being the API. And so this is just a tiny little test. Obviously, ignore the gigantic comments right there. These were the tests for my different stepper motors. But like, this is an example of how the communication could work. So right now I am communicating with the SP32 through serial. So on my setup, I begin the serial at a particular baud rate. Like this is the number of bits you can send to the card per second. And now on loop, meaning like every loops of the code, I send a hello world message and wait one second. This is what I do right now. 
now. So when I say I sent, I don't send it from my PC. Like this code would live on the actual ESP32. So like the ESP32 sends through its serial port this message right there. And on the other side, I have a Python script right there that listens to where the ESP32 lives, more like where the USB output comes from. So this would be COM6 because this is connected to the port COM6 on my USBs. And so I have a while loop that runs and runs and runs and runs. Obviously forget about that. This was another test. And this is just going to read what is received. And so if we just start this, as you can see, every second we receive a hello world. And that's quite fantastic. So we can talk about so many things. Like this was so frustrating. Like I learned pretty soon enough that I, that you actually like cannot communicate on two COM ports at once. For example, like I was sending the new firmware to the boards and then I tried to directly run the Python script. But since the serial port was already read by the firmware platform.io thing to like communicate with the board, this couldn't start. Like I learned that you cannot, yeah, you just cannot listen to one COM port twice. Wait. No, on two different areas. There you go. So yeah, I have so many things to learn. This is already like a good beginning. Again, I'm trying to gaslight myself into thinking like, yeah, yeah, you're okay. But uh, yeah, this is going and uh, yeah, it's just exciting for the future. So again, setting up a, like a goal for next week. I would love to be able to, from the Python API, just like give it two numbers, like those two numbers being like the steps of the motors, receive that by DSP32, process it and move the motors to that position. That would be great. And in the meantime, also, I started to work on the design of the pen holder. I think I'm going to use a very simple servo motor to just like make the pen go on and off the paper. But this is where we are right now. So I guess by next week, I hope we'll have something that works where I can like actually send data to the robot, read it, process it. And on the other time, maybe next time show you a V1 of the pen holder. That would be great. So I think that is it for me. I hope you guys had a wonderful week. Do not hesitate to like, subscribe, give me your opinions, maybe tips that would be absolutely amazing. And I will see you guys next week on the internet. Bye bye, everyone.